Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, there's nothing that I love more than an artist that shows up on time. I love it. You don't have to wait. You don't have to call and say, oh, okay. Oh, ETA. Oh, okay. And then for a good 20 minutes, you're like, get loring, because we're too high. Miss Ntavi is here. <laughs> yeah. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's so nice to be here. It's so nice to finally have you. It's one of those situations where I've known you for so long, but I've never interviewed you. I know. So now know. I'm like, I don't know how to act. <laughs> I don't know what to do because we'll, I have we'll to be a it light. We'll I have to be a light. professional, no, but that's don't. not how I know just you. Just be yourself. Let's just have fun, <laughs> Mrs. Tabby. Where you been, bro? Ish, ish. Yeah, let's know, start there. Right? Where you been? I know, right? Yeah, I, I've been making music. I've been in the stew. I've been self-reflecting. I've been writing. I've been just figuring shit out right yeah yeah and what has that been like because reflecting working figuring stuff out all of that individually is a lot i know I but know. now you've been doing it all together i know the thing is right i've never really made music because i feel like okay i'm forced to mm-hmm. i need to put something out now or i haven't made music in however many years every time i do it it's because i feel like Okay, I have a message. I have something I'm going through at that time and I want to share that experience with people. So it's been a lot and I also just needed to step back yeah. and just look at everything and what was going on because the last project I dropped was very heavy. Yes. And I needed to move away from that because I'm not in that space anymore. So yeah, it's it's been it's been dope. Is it difficult to listen to that project, especially because now you're not there anymore? And I, I almost feel like it's like looking in the pages of your diary. Yeah. I know once I've written something in my journal, for instance, I don't want to go back. Yeah. And if I accidentally come across it, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> really? Actually, before, are you okay? <laughs> before the album dropped, I actually listened to um, Broken Silence and I got goosebumps. It's like, this project is dope. <laughs> I was just like, wow, it's it was so honest. It was so pure, but I didn't listen to it and think, okay, I'm in that space again. I listened to it as an outsider and I was like, damn, you've been through the most and you yeah. made it through and you were able to capture that moment. And it was it was refreshing for me because I was like, okay, I'm listening to it sonically. I'm not really listening to it from an emotional state. I'm just listening to the production and how it was mixed and the writing. So I listened to it detached from it. But... Now, the fact that you did that already makes it different from what a lot of artists will do, for instance, right? A lot of people will be like, I'm in album mode. I don't want to listen to anything right now. Not even their own stuff because they don't want to be influenced by yeah. the old them or what's currently happening right now. So why make that choice? And the thing is, I didn't listen to it while I was making energy. I listened after energy was done. Really? I listened to it a day before energy dropped. And I played... I think I played part of Welcome to Me. Yeah. And then I played the whole of Broken Silence. And then I played Energy. And it felt so trippy for me. I felt like I was going through some time capsule. I just wanted to feel what it's like and listen to me from who I was then to who I am now. So when I was making the album, I didn't want to listen to any any rapidly rap stuff. Right. I wanted to just hear different sounds, experiment with different sounds. I... Most of the time, I would actually just drive in silence and figure it out. <laughs> yeah, I don't do that. No, I, I did it. Hey, I don't normally do that, but I would I would just either drive in silence or I'd play some random ass music. I, I wasn't listening to anything that could potentially influence me otherwise. So having listened to that and like you say, it was almost like a time capsule, you know, seeing different versions of yourself and then coming to energy. How do you describe that whole evolution or transformation yeah if i had to put it in one word i would actually just call it energy to me yeah to be honest i'll call it energy because if i think of it i mean what does energy stand for it's every natural entity requires god's yielding right and if i listen to what i did with my very first project my ep I was not necessarily yielding. I was trying to prove a point. Mm. And then came the very first album. And with that, I felt like I was yielding in that moment because I'd never done an album before. And here I am just being a mother, dropping a project independently. And then I was like, okay, this is where you're at. You're yielding to that point. 
And then came Broken Silence. I made that mixtape. I wasn't thinking about making a mixtape. Mm-hmm. And it just happened. Again, I yielded. Same with Energy. It was like, okay, we're going to go into the studio, see what happens. And then Energy came. So I would really, really summarize my whole evolution or journey as Energy. I really just yielded to this purpose, this calling, this gift. Everything that I've been given, I've just, I've just put it out and I've used it. So explain to somebody who might not fully grasp this concept of yielding yeah. and what it entails yeah. and maybe what it feels like for somebody who might not realize that they may or may not have been yielding and how you might be able to identify it. We're put on this earth for a purpose. And once you understand what that purpose is, you're essentially yielding to your calling. Some people have been gifted with being able to listen to people. Some people have been gifted with being able to talk. Some people have been gifted with making music. Some people, ha- you know, we all come into this earth with a specific gift. And your gift could touch one person. Your gift could touch no one but yourself. Or your gift could touch thousands of people. So yeah. yielding is really about tapping into what is my purpose? What was I put on this earth to do? And am I doing it? And it's not always going to be one thing. You could have many callings, you could be good at many things, but once you understand that this is your core purpose, then you're essentially yielding to it. How do you know what that is, though? How do you know, especially when it comes to gifts, for instance, right? People might think that Mm -hmm. gifts are the things that are super obvious, like, oh, no, when you were little, you used to come perform for us. So, you know, you should be a singer. And then somebody, you know, somebody who ends up being a singer or a performer tells you that kind of story. And then there are other people who might not even realize that they are using their gift Mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Like you're saying, sometimes just being able to listen. Exactly. And people might not realize. So how... How does one know what that is? Is it the thing that keeps you up at night, as they always say? Or is it like a feeling? Like, how do you know? What is the one thing that you do well without even realizing you do well? Mm. One thing that you do without even trying to do? What is that thing that comes naturally to you? That's your purpose. You know, um, sometimes you have to tap into that talent and nurture it. I mean, if you're a singer... You are going to go to a vocal school or some sort. But if when you open your mouth and you sing and you feel something in you, then you're a singer. You know what I mean? So it's that thing that you don't even have to try. It just, it's there. And then what about the people, for instance, right? And you see it a lot, especially in in the space that we're in, Mm. um, where people are passionate about certain things, right? I can make an example for myself of myself that nobody takes offense. (laughs) I... Nah. No, let me do it because, you know, I can pick out people with it. It's going to be I like... I know where you're trying to go yo. with this. Where, where someone thinks that, yo, this is... I'm good at this so Let me I'm tell yielding. you, nah, in my depths of me... Nah. <laughs> you shut up. In my depths of me, I am a rapper's rapper's rapper. Okay? okay. I am... Abs- I know, right? Okay. I am absolutely incredible. Okay. At my core. But because I'm also a very realistic person, I know I can't rap. Okay. I actually cannot rap. Okay. I can recite raps. Yeah. Easily. Because the work is done for me. You've done the work for me. All I have to do, I have a good memory. So all I have to do is, oh, okay. That's what she's saying. Oh, that's how she's saying it. Cool. And because of that, people think that I can rap. I can't rap. Mm-hmm. But there are people who don't have that second layer of, I'm really passionate about this thing, but I might not necessarily be good at it how would you deal with somebody like but that the fact that you're saying you first said i'm a rapper at my core right and yes then you said i can't rap no i really can't though then you're not a rapper you're but a lover of rap no no you're not <laughs> no <laughs> then you're a lover no of this is my house be nice to me <laughs> but you you know what i mean but the fact that you said but i can't rap then <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're you're just a lover of rap. You know what I mean? Like, I can love singing, but it doesn't mean I'm a singer. Okay. But now, okay, maybe because it's me and you, you can be that honest with yeah. me. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm not going to walk out of here and be like, oh, my God, she hates me. She doesn't understand. There are people who might not necessarily be able to take that kind of truth. But at the same time, they need to hear it. Yeah. What do we do? I mean... Give your opinion where it's asked for, right? Mm. I'm not going to go around crushing people's dreams and just saying 
shut up, don't rap. Who am I to tell someone? <laughs> like, what you just said to me? But because you asked me, you know what I mean? You asked me. You said, how do you answer someone? And you used yourself as an example. So you set yourself up for failure with Damn that one. No. But I mean. I'm not I'm not going to crush somebody else's dreams but if somebody comes and asks for an honest opinion I'm always going to give you an honest opinion. Um but I think we're also living in a time where we're so afraid to insult people mm-hmm. and we've become so sensitive where we have to kind of cushion what we say and watch what we say. We're living in a time of you can be whatever you want to be. Yeah. Achieve your dreams, go for it, which yes. is all good and well. Yes. But it doesn't necessarily mean you going for it means you're good at it. Mm-hmm. You just probably have the right financial backing to make it happen for you. It doesn't necessarily mean you are great at it. So be honest. It's okay to be honest with people, but we've just have to we kind of become so sensitive to everything and we have to sensitize every single thing we say that's that's the world we're living in unfortunately but there's a difference between being cruel and yes. being honest yes so i feel like sometimes people cross that line of just being cruel yeah whereas it's okay to be honest and be like oh okay that's what you're doing i don't fucks with it but it's okay you do you what is an honest opinion or a truth that you've been told that maybe at the time yeah you're like no i, I don't want to hear that i'm not interested in that or this hurts me but now that maybe some time has passed you're like you know what actually might have a point musically or just generally generally in life um i was told i'm very sensitive which i was in denial about <laughs> hate that word <laughs> I know, right? I was told I'm sensitive, which I was in denial about, but truth is I actually am pretty sensitive. And the reason I am is because I feel everything so deeply. Um from not just feeling myself, but an awareness of how other people are feeling. Like if I walk into a room and the energy is off, it throws me off completely. Yeah. I can feel if it's heavy. I can feel that something is not right here, and that's why I watch the kind of spaces I go into because I absorb all that energy and yeah. if if it's off then it throws me off. So it kind of threw me off because I was like why are you calling me sensitive? Why would you <laughs> say that? Why would because you Because for say whatever that? reason when when somebody says you're sensitive and because you are sensitive. Yeah. Right? And obviously this is also me admitting my sensitivity. <laughs> but because you are sensitive, you become so extra sensitive exactly. to what they're saying that it takes a lot longer for you to go ish they might actually have a point <laughs> or they use you being sensitive to to kind of mask what mask whatever you're talking about so yes. even if no what you're saying is wrong but because you are deemed sensitive it's like okay you're not hearing me because you're sensitive yes yeah i don't know i think that sometimes because of how sensitive you are sometimes it feels like the word is being thrown at you like a weapon and right? you're like why why exactly why, why are you making me bleed exactly yeah but once you realize that actually i am it's okay okay some hard truths to i mean it's hard truths to swallow you have you have to kind of introspect if 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 you're going to complain about what everybody else says about you without looking at yourself like hold up what is it that's making people say these things about me then you kind of you know letting it go to waste we all have to just take a moment to introspect as well not that you should take what people say to heart yeah but just introspect All right. So you can tell what the energy for tonight is going to yes. be. Super introspective, super knowledgeable as well. <laughs> uh cuz we'll keep it light though. <laughs> light. Okay. You just told me I can't rap. <laughs> no, you, no, I told you I can't rap. You told me I'm not a rapper, not even at my core. <laughs> You've told me that I must introspect and ask why people are saying this initiative. Um what else? <laughs> There's a lot that's happened in the few minutes It's that you've been here. It's all love. How is this light? <laughs> Thank you, Mela Jo. What is happening? But nonetheless, I'm I'm uh. going to work on myself so that we can have a good time. We're going to take a quick money break and thereafter you're going to hear Miss and Tabby featuring Zion with a joint called Diamonds. That's my favorite song right now. Love it. We'll talk more <laughs> about that in just a bit. We're hanging out with Miss and Tabby talking all things energy, having yes. really dope chats off air as well and being dragged for Wow. Go exposed. 
Ah. No, I won't, don't worry. Why? I got you, don't worry. One expose <laughs> deserves another. <laughs> No, let's not go there. <laughs> so the problem with bringing family to studio, <laughs> nah, these things get a little bit out of hand. All right, back to the work. Yes. Before Hawaii Trick. Yes. For all involved. Please. All right, guys, it's the time of the show where I bring out I'm a pepper. Oh wow. Ooh. So I'm so super old school. I make notes. Girl, you it's all have home. notes and everything. Uh, h- how else must I prep? I'm just like wow. D- d- how did you want this to go? Let's maybe let's start there. I I just rocked up. I was about to bring a bottle or something. <laughs> oh, we'll never say no to a bottle. <laughs> ah, show me. Ah, oh, it's fine. That one is always a yes. I thought we were just gonna chat, you know. No, but we are gonna chat. But th- there's but always yes. a purpose to our chat. I mean, there oh, are mics definitely. today. Normally, definitely. when we chat, there are no mics. Definitely. So there are mics today. So I'm I have impressed. to. I have to respect it. You're not winging it. I I love it. I want to wing. It's not a real chat. Sometimes I feel like I'm winging it at this life thing, man. Okay, there I wing it a lot. <laughs> Almost it's, every day. It's a wing. <laughs> when you wake up and you're like, yo. Yeah. Okay, let's, I, let's I, try let's, it. Let's try this. <laughs> let's, let's do this. Okay, where you definitely didn't wing it um, is every natural entity requires God's yielding. Yay. Energy. Uh, 13 joints mm-hmm. on it. Released on the 4th of November. 3 plus 1 is 4. Yes. Yes. On your birthday yes. also. <laughs> Why did you release on your birthday, babe? What, what's the significance of that? Especially <gasps> with the title as well. You yeah. know, it all comes together. You know why just the fact that this album is titled Energy and how everything happened with it is a testament to what we've been talking about when it comes to yielding. This album was supposed to come out last year already. Mm. (laughs) It was supposed to come out last year and there were a few songs that we wanted to tweak here and there. And then we decided, okay, it's going to come out in September. Okay. September came, we were like, okay... We're not ready yet. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and then I decided, okay, we're going to do it in November. I listened to um, the full album and then I realized there's 13 tracks. Mm-hmm. And I was like, there's something with the number four. I don't know. It's my lucky number. Yeah. It's my favorite number. It's the day I was born. And I was like, there's something with this number four. We just, we need to go with it. So yeah. we decided on the 4th of November and it's the fourth project love it so there's a whole four theme happening and i think how i think the album is about i need to time it but there was also significance in how long the whole album was and when i added it up it actually it's like 37 i was turning 37 so i was like this is some trippy shit happening it's a little bit hectic and I, I, did, I know i know this so sounds like this is some trippy ish happening with this album there's just some hectic numerology that is happening and that's why i'm like everything happened the way it was supposed to happen the yeah. stars were just aligned so tell me about um the way that you've titled not just the album but also Almost all the joints. The only yeah. one that doesn't have uh, the acronym type yeah. titling is Third Eye. Yeah. Talk to me about that. About Third Eye or the acronyms? About the acronyms. Yo. So, <laughs> while making this album, right, um, I had a vision in terms of how I wanted it to look visually. Mm. So, I could see the album before I could actually hear it. And I said to Tabelo, I want this album every title needs to be acronym so every time he was recording and would save a track he'd be like what's the name of the song <laughs> I'm like, i don't know <laughs> I wanna copy. i'm like i don't know so we just name it as we going and i'm like acronym it he's like are you gonna find acronyms for all of these things I'm like i don't know i just it looks nice it just looked pretty <laughs> and i was like we will figure it out yeah literally the last acronym I eventually came up with was about 24 hours before the album had to be loaded. Tell me saying. I know. What is that? I don't. I, I was like, it's not coming to me, but it will come to me. For someone with OCD, that was really messed up. I know. I, and the thing is, I wanted it to come. I wanted it to just come. To, I didn't want to think too hard about it. Yeah. So as we were going, and it was funny enough, it was actually for Diamonds. <laughs> I just couldn't I knew the song is gonna be called Diamonds but I'm like what the hell how do you acronym Diamonds what, what are we gonna say what are we gonna call I don't know but then yeah it, it okay so give it me the came. give me the breakdown of Diamonds because that's the one that I couldn't find so D-I-A-M-O-N-D-S 
don't internalize any madness mm-hmm. or nourish dead speech. Ooh. Don't internalize any madness or, or nourish, nourish dead, dead speech. What is dead speech, friend? Dead speech is that talk that you can't do this. Mm. You're not good enough. You're not going to achieve this. You know that that chitter chatter in your ear that's yes. dead speech yes so don't internalize that i mean if you listen to the song it's really about no matter what pressure you're going through you're gonna you're gonna make it out so even with the verses it's just don't listen to the noise don't listen to what they're telling you just stay in your lane own lane own pace own way yeah so. that's the joint that made me that made me want to ask you about the power of words as well because yeah. i mean on there you say we've got to watch what we say um pain goes away time's gonna fade only, only our, our words, words are gonna remain. remain so words and their power mm. um because sometimes we just say things i think also through the album there's a very strong love theme whether it's self-love yeah. or romantic love yeah. whatever you know there's there's love there as well and even in love there's there's a certain way that you need to speak. Yes. Um, even if you are uh, reprimanding somebody exactly. or making somebody aware of something, if there's love there, there's a certain way that you're going to talk. Exactly. So words and their power. Why is it important to be mindful of your words? Because that's what people remember. Um, people always remember what you say and how what you said made them feel. Yeah. So it's once words are spoken, they can't be unspoken. You can't take it back. It's it is. And what you, it is. as the receiver, can't unhear it. Exactly. Yeah. And the funny thing is, with this album, um, with all my previous albums, I was so conscious of how I was writing, my style of writing, and what I'm going to do with this album. I actually didn't care about the writing more than I did about the production. Really? At all? <laughs> like wow. I did not every time we created so this album means so much to me because i was involved with the production from beginning to end like i was sitting in studio we created together every beat every sound every would literally go in and he'd be like um when i say he i'm referring to tapelo (laughs) he would ask me so how are you feeling today what are we creating i'm like okay i kind of want to go in this direction Mm -hmm. and we would sit we'd find the instruments we would just create from start to finish so for me the production credits meant so much more than the writing because i was like shit i (laughs) co-produced my album album. (laughs) (laughs) wait you co-produce your album i I need to give you a a something (laughs) for that because it's it's very important She oh totally God. got the yes. Totally I love got that. the yes. Yeah. And because I was so focused on the production, so I mean, um, we go in, we make the beat, and then when we're like halfway done with the beat, I start writing. And I started writing um by the time he's done finalizing the beat, I'm done with the writing. Yeah. I wasn't thinking about it. It would just come. Like some of the songs I didn't even write full verses. It would be like, okay write this and this and then we'll figure it out this right? is a one accord <laughs> we'll figure it, it out one so <laughs> i know i did i did everything i've never done with this album i wanted to be outside of my comfort zone in every way possible i was like take me out of my comfort zone let's just try something new you know um that's why the writing is so bizarre to me that all the songs came out the way they did because i wasn't thinking about it yeah they just they just came i didn't have to sit and be like okay what am i gonna rhyme with now what am i gonna say on this song as soon as the beat came it kind of led where the the song is gonna go do you think that has to do with um spiritual energy as well you know a lot of the times when instra and i are speaking you know he'll always say music is a spiritual thing definitely it's not just well i can sing so let me sing exactly um so it almost sounds like you started but it wasn't you who finished exactly exactly That's crazy i wouldn't every time we stepped into that booth it was um every time i went into studio it was it was a spiritual journey for me because even when making the album i never recorded anything at night because mm. i knew when we were starting that i want this to be a morning album i want it to be something you listen to when you first wake up i want to hear the birds i want to hear you know random water sounds yes so how am i gonna make a morning album in the evening uh-huh. you know and i was very 
very i mean i've always been like that but i was very conscious about who's in the studio at that time i it's, it wasn't a party <laughs> you know <laughs> niggas weren't coming in to chill if if anything i was gonna invite the people i want to chill with on that day if right we, you know but I, it wasn't that kind of setup it was a very safe space to just be i didn't want to be rushed i didn't want to feel like i'm worried or conscious about who's in the room and who's gonna say what exactly yeah. i didn't want any outside influence so it, it was such a it was such a sacred space for me where Tapelo always knew that we can't just have randoms hanging around in studio mm. every time I come. I would literally kick people out like, "Okay, it's my session. Bye." <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> it's time for you to go. 100%. <laughs> so, just making sure that that space was sacred and pure and pure enough for me to create played a huge role. I didn't want to hold back. So, yeah, music is is it's a very spiritual thing it's a very spiritual thing i love that i could feel it remember when i told you i was like oh, the album and then i felt like this <laughs> and then <laughs> then it got me thinking I this know, and that so you definitely achieved what you wanted to achieve i'm glad by taking us on a spiritual journey i'm glad i love that all right so i'm gonna play miss and tabby and reason with third eye it seems Whoop. like the most appropriate thing to do <laughs> with the way the conversation has gone and third we'll be back eye. on the other side of this The Element presents Strike. My strife, my youth, my love, my hate, my respect and love. I own my strike. The dominators of the game. Exclusive to the element. Turn down the lights. I earn my strike. On Massive Metro. Okay, there's 22 minutes left, so I'm not going to waste time. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, where did all the time know, go? Right? Okay, so we just played Third Eye with reason and i thought it was such a nice segue from the conversation that we were having as yeah. well and when i was listening earlier on there's something that you said uh you said i'm a, from a good line of powerful souls mm-hmm. talk to me about come that come from a bloodline of powerful souls yeah <laughs> you be the first and the last of your own so i mean i come from i mean we all come from powerful bloodlines but the women in my family like my grandmother and my great grandmother and they were these strong women and their strength was because of how much pain they in- they enjoyed and mm-hmm. they could stand and i felt like with me i want to break that my strength is not going to be based on how much pain i took Whew. my strength is going to be based on beauty my strength is going to be based on happiness my strength is going to be based on the foundation I've managed to set to break that generational struggle. Right. <laughs> you know, so that's where it comes from. I mean, I don't think our our great grandparents and our ancestors suffered so that we can also suffer. Yeah. They wanted us to live a better life and it's our responsibility to make sure that we leaving something better for the next generation. Shout out to my son. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to your son. So shout out to my baby. Um so yeah, just to make sure that we leave a proper legacy for the next generation. So that's why I say come from a bloodline of powerful souls. I know who I am and who I am. Mm. And because I know who I am and who I am, I can always show up as the best version of myself possible. I love that and I love the fact that you also mentioned your son because um I think it's on dreams where where you you speak about you know you don't want him to have to worry about chasing paper no um because you you're taking care of that right exactly. now exactly talk to me a little bit more I loved that I mean and that's the thing I mean one of the conversations we always have is about that generational wealth you know and I always have conversations with him that you it's your time now whatever you dream whatever you want to achieve now is your time to do that whatever we put aside in savings and investments is not for you to squander it's for mm. you to add on for your kids and for them to add on for their kids you know what i mean so we didn't have that backup plan unfortunately with our yeah. parents you know what i yeah. mean so it's important that our parents supported our dreams yes but it was our responsibility to fund those dreams mm-hmm. whereas with our kids i think we sort of <clears throat> funding the dream as well as supporting it yeah. and and it's important to have that balance between the two because it's all well and when you say ma I want to go into radio mm-hmm. and I want to do this and yeah. your mother's thinking shit how are you going to pay the bills how are you going to do this there's no money in that thing exactly whereas had she said to you okay this is how much I have to help you out with a demo 
what else do you need to do yeah what do you need to start you know what i mean just having that support goes a long way so with dreams it was really important for me to tap into that don't let your dreams die out because you don't have the funds for it yeah let funds not if 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 money was not an issue where would you be today and what would you be doing exactly it also made me made me want to ask you about you know there's a conversation that Insta and I had um and we were speaking about this concept or this idea of what you are passionate about not necessarily always being able to pay your bills mm. and sometimes you you end up having to do the things that you are passionate about and the things where you feel like your purpose is on the side yeah. because that's not where your livelihood is mm. coming from um and i find that incredibly sad it is sad i mean because i i also feel like i get it mm. but if you find a way to do what you love even in your 9 to 5 if at all possible it won't feel like it's a job for you, you yeah. know what i mean i mean you're here you're working but because you love what you do it doesn't always feel like a job you yeah. need to take it seriously yes but it is sad that unfortunately we are in a world whereby your passion doesn't always sustain you financially and it, it it's it is what it is it's the reality and the 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 part that i find tricky is when people kind of equate passion with brokenness Yes. You know, and this is I guess where your conversation was going, but it doesn't always have to be that way. There is ways to kind of make yourself get an income somehow from it. It's it's not going to be easy. Sometimes it takes sacrifice. It takes a lot of hard work, but eventually it will get to a point where it brings you back the money. And if it's if it's you yielding, mm-hmm. trust me, it will come back to you. What do you say to the dreamer who feels like if they do um step away from the passion so yeah. to speak to go find that 9 to 5 to sustain themselves that it's them not being true to their dream that it's them turning their back on their dream or not fully believing in it because you know as dreamers you go well I'm really passionate about mm-hmm. rapping for instance and therefore because I'm so passionate about it and because God has given me this gift yeah. and surely I should be able to sustain myself on this thing that I love yeah. and this gift that you've given me and this fire that's burning inside of me and sometimes life doesn't work out that it way and yeah. so sometimes you might have to go get that other thing to help sustain you while you're and it's doing completely that thing. fine i mean there's nothing cute about being hungry you know um i'm going to use myself as an example i make music because it's a part of who i am but i also know that the kind of music i make doesn't necessarily appeal to a commercial market mm. and i know that the kind of music i make is for only a niche market can relate to it and it's not going to bring me the amount of money that is going to make me be sustained yes. throughout the month for it so yeah. i work and the work that i do is still a passion for me you know what i mean i work with kids i do so many other things and i love what i do but i also always used to say i don't want to just make music i don't want to i don't want music to feel like my job because then i can't be selfish about it right now i'm at mm. that point where i can make music when i want to and how i want to not because i'm depending on it to feed me If music was the only thing I did, I'd be frustrated and I wouldn't love it as much as I do right now yeah. because I'd constantly think of shit, I need to make a hit, I need to do this, I need to do that. But now I can be selective about the kind of music I make and I can be selective about where I go and where I don't go. If I don't want to do a certain show, I won't do it. If yeah. I don't want to do a certain interview, I won't do it. So I can keep my passion for this as pure as possible without it affecting my bread because yeah. Yeah. But it also goes back to um what you were saying when we first started talking about how um your calling and your purpose is not always just one exactly. thing. And exactly. you can do a lot of different things exactly. and still be in alignment. Exactly. I love it. Okay. <laughs> Where are we going now? Where are we going? Mm. Tell me there's so many things that you said that resonated with me. I think I even tweeted it earlier on um that your your album has been a companion to me in the past few weeks because it's just felt so a lot man you know that end of year rush and it seems like yeah. everything is coming at you now 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 and i'm super sensitive i'm super anxious <laughs> as well so i'm just like yeah <sighs> just breathe and then 
I listen and I'm just like, oh, okay, everything is gonna be all right. Everything, everything is, is, going is gonna to be, be okay. Okay, how how can you be so sure of that? Because even even in every single song that I hear, there's just this. You're sure because I know it's gonna be all right because I'm going to create it. I'm going to make it all right. Mm. My happiness is not dependent on you. My happiness is not dependent on my son. My happiness is not dependent on any relationship I'm in. My happiness is from within. So if I'm not right with in myself, yeah, nothing around me is gonna work. So I'm always sure that everything is gonna be okay because I'm gonna make sure it's okay. And what do you say to somebody who might feel powerless? I think especially because I think over the past, yeah, the past year, two years now, especially with everything that's happened with COVID-19, yeah. a lot more people started to feel helplessness yeah. where they might never have experienced that before. Mm. So a lot of people have, have dabbled with helplessness. Some people have found themselves in the pit of helplessness yeah. and powerlessness. So what do you say to somebody who might not realize that they actually still have some power in them what matters and i think this is something that i also had to grapple with during the first lockdown when we were on that hard lockdown ma'am it was hard right it was it was a lot and there's a lot happening but if you pause and think most of the time the stuff that affects us yes is us being worried about what's happened or us being worried about what's coming yes it's never what's happening now so all we have is the now. If you had to think about every single thing that you're worried about, is it about now? Not. So if you can just learn to train your mind and train self to live in the now, you'll realize that all this other stress is actually self-inflicted. Mm. You can't change the past. It's gone. But you can sort of change the future by how you handle the now. So hey. a lot of the stuff that we worry about really doesn't need to be a worry. <laughs> just saying. Oh, yes, hotula. You know what? Let's take a money break because this is actually quite a lot. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Miss Ntabi said she doesn't want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> I want to put that out there so that people don't think that I'm holding you hostage. You're hugging. I am hugging you, but I love you and I love spending time uh. with you and chatting to you. Okay. So, we just played um, you and P.O. Heaven. Uh, me. heaven in me him heaven in me <laughs> do you understand you know i looked at that thing and i was like there are so many layers here that i could pull apart yeah at, right and when i and when i looked at it when i was like okay heaven in me him so you think him you think you think love you think significant other you yeah. think partner type thing yeah. right and then when you get that the acronym is heaven in me you go whoopsie wait <laughs> Right. Three different. <laughs> um let's start there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> let's start there. I see what you did there. <laughs> well, with Heaven and Me, right? Um I've always wanted to do a song with Pirado. I mean, the first time we worked together was on his album, um, on like White Doves. Yes. And I had said, if we're going to collaborate, it needs to be organic. It, uh-huh. it shouldn't be because it's expected. I know a lot of people you. kept saying, when are you guys going to do a song together? When are you guys going to do a song together? But it's like, like the whole, hey, Peter O and Ray Black, let's exactly, rise. When are you guys? And exactly. It's like, exactly. Someone's it was, doing this. Someone's doing that. Exactly. Someone's doing that. It was yeah. so cheesy. And I was like, nah, it will come when it's supposed to come. So with this song, um, I actually heard this brandy song and i said to tabello i don't know but my spirit is telling me we need to sample the song i don't know how i don't know why but we need to do it and as soon as we recorded i was like okay i can hear p dot on the song Uh uh-huh and i was like you're gonna come through you're gonna do it and then he recorded it at a completely different time from me i went and did my thing and then he went in and he did his thing but i didn't want us to have a cheesy collaboration i get what you mean that expected cheese so i felt like it fits so well and it it kind of felt like the flip side to what we did on his album yes so it's like uh you know him and her yes you know heaven and me have so it, it, it was a nice it was a nice balance and i liked i liked that so we yet to do a song where we're both in studio um, oh crazy i know <laughs> we need we need to do that but with this one i said i think i want to do something that 
taps into another into another level into another realm and i mean he's a very he's a very emotional rapper <laughs> he can be but look in the foot cuz the last time you tell he was like no queen is he's a, i like to believe that i'm a very well rounded no, well balanced artist no he's a very well rounded artist said, he yes but his said, music i'm said, like oh, oh, depressed man <laughs> that's <laughs> I'm like nigga, why are you depressed? <laughs> no, and and we resolved. You look, we it it got to a nice conclusion because I said to him, "Is it not maybe what it is that you decide to put out and push?" Yeah, you know. Exactly. And I said to him, "I'm not saying that you're not a well-rounded artist, exactly. but I do feel like I remember the one time I said to him, I was like, dog, I can't listen to your music in the car.'" He's like, "Why?" I'm like, "Cause I will crash." <laughs> it's from the emotion. It's too much emotion. You know what I mean? I said to him. The kind of music, especially at the time that he was releasing, I was like, I got to be at home. Yeah, I have to have just taken a, a an Epsom salt bath. <laughs> <laughs> not even then, <laughs> with uh, my incense, be yeah. laying there and know that I ain't got nothing to do. Because if I cry, it's fine. And I'm like, and that's the thing. At that point in time, that's the kind of music that you were But making. But you know what's crazy though? I mean, if you look at how much people love that kind of music it kind of tells you that we are living in a society where people are addicted to pain people i love that you said glorify that. pain it's it's almost like yes it's important to to tap into people's struggles and you need to be relatable but it's it's just so sad that we we are just addicted to this pain and we love yeah. we love chest pain music we love pain no. you know <laughs> we love that chest pain music we love that oh my gosh and That's one thing I wanted to move away from yeah. with this album. I was like I don't want to be in pain. I don't yeah. want to feel like yo my heart is breaking. Even if you listen to it and some people may say it's a deep album, but yes. it's deep and light at the same time. Just, yes. So you don't I don't want you to walk away feeling like yo, heavy. No. And rough. I never did. <laughs> and I never did, but it, it you know, it's one of those things like when I listened to it the first time, I was like, "Oh, this is beautiful. This is nice. This is And then I listened, listened and I said, "Oh, wait." There's real life themes yeah. that that are here and I thought it was really beautiful how you managed to package that in such a way that you're saying some real stuff but I wasn't like oh. yeah oh my god it needed to be a journey I mean the whole album is about how what, the when we made it I was like what do you want to listen to when you wake up that's yes. why you hear the birds you hear the alarm you hear the water sound you hear the you hear kettle. the wake and bake you <laughs> Yeah, I caught it. <laughs> you caught it. <laughs> yeah. I caught that wake and pick. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, all these arm sounds, I, we were very intentional about it. Even in the production was like we wanted those strange arm yes. sounds. Like it needed to feel like a story and it's not easy making a body of work. It's very easy to make singles and be on features and hop on this but to make a body of work where you're te- it's almost like telling a story or a movie from beginning and then it has a middle and it has an ending so we were very intentional about you know all the interludes all the ob sounds that we wanted because it needed to be an experience so by the time you get to the end of the album it's more like the end of the day yeah I love that. So we are getting there yes. to the end of our time together yes. towards the end of the album as yes. well but It's very interesting. I think we are connected somewhere because you you spoke about um uh you spoke about chess pain music. <laughs> chess pain music. And it's so funny that you mentioned that because as I was listening to Heaven and Me again as I was prepping, I wanted to ask you because some of the themes that were touched on in there, right? Made me think about how as people a lot of the time we have this idea whether we say it out loud or not that love is supposed to hurt mm. that there's a part of it that mm. should be a little bit like sir nyana mm. i also picked it up on on sides for instance you know there's a part where you're like do you shout mm. do you not mm. and i feel like people equate that kind of robust passion that could be painful as necessary mm. for it to be love, love. what is love No, it's your interview. <laughs> <laughs> What is love? I mean, love is a doing word, right? It's a verb. It's it's a love is a doing word and love is living off valued energy. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's what love stands for and 
that energy sometimes can be a little bit heavy sometimes it can be light but love is all encompassing love covers a multitude of sin love is not boastful love you know what i mean if i could i could quote the bible i could quote but love is just a doing word it's pure that that's what love is for me um so it doesn't necessarily mean that we expect love to hurt mm. i think what we expect is those we love to not hurt us yes but yeah we just end up equating the pain that we feel from those we love as though love is hurting you no love is not hurting you it's the person you love who's hurting you yeah yeah that is so intense <laughs> but i love it uh. <laughs> so we move from from heaven in me right yeah and then the next joint is free and I love that song. <laughs> like I love it. Yeah. I know I know why you love it. I know I, why you love it cuz of Birdie. <laughs> I love it. And I I think that you know from from listening to Heaven and Meets now going to Free. I was like, okay, so and Tabby, what what is freedom in love mm. to you and what is freedom in life to you? Freedom in life to me so free stands for freedom requires embracing elevation right mm-hmm. that's what free stands for mm-hmm. that's what freedom in life is for me just right. embracing elevation elevating higher taking it higher just vibrate higher no matter what you're going through they go low you go high yes. you know what i mean um never ever lose yourself because of what's happening around you even if people hurt you even if people do something that may necessarily not be what you expect don't change who you are don't change your core because of what's happening on the outside that's what freedom in life means to me freedom in love <laughs> freedom in love is almost the same yeah but freedom in love is allowing the other person to be because i love myself so much more mm-hmm. when you love someone you're not necessarily trying to change them you don't own them we don't own people we experience them and this is what i always say but in love it seems like sometimes we're so eager to build these perfect partners you don't do this you don't make me happy it's not their responsibility to make it's you happy it's just says that's the ego at play exactly all the time it's not their responsibility to make you happy it's not the you need to come to each other whole i'm not here to fill you up you're not here to fill me up let's meet each other whole and build from that so freedom and love is understanding my love for self and then i can love you as my best self mm. so yeah i love me enough for the both of us essentially <laughs> right i love you but not more than i love me yo exactly <laughs> <laughs> and it's it sounds so messed up when you say it like that but i think you're definitely right that you you can't come half you can't um because the expectations that you then put on the next person they are going to fail exactly they are going to fail and you're going to get hurt and i mean we're well. all figuring f- hmm, fingering out yes <laughs> we're all figuring Cut it out, out. <laughs> we're all figuring it out you know i mean it's this life thing i don't i don't have the answers i'm no love guru no love expert the only thing i can share is my own personal experiences and what i've learned through these past 2 years pre lockdown post lockdown is your self awareness is kind of going to determine the kind of life you're going to live yeah. and how you experience self is going to kind of determine how everybody else experiences you if you're in a crappy space people are going to experience a crappy you yeah if you're in a good space people are going to experience that good you but you also need to be mindful of who's coming to experience you and who's coming to suck that's true yo man All right. We're going to wrap up. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz the the last join on on the project is love. Yes. And um you know you you painted a picture just now of you having listened to your previous projects and I asked you mm. when you listened to that transition and that now we yeah. understand shifting of energy yeah. to where and who you are right now. So with all of that taken into consideration What does Miss Antabi love most about herself right now? Yo, what I love most about myself right now is my ability to be in a space of gratitude. I there's nothing that I feel I need. I feel like I have everything that I could possibly want right now, you know. Um 
of course there are things that you you want want yes. but just looking in general at my life i'm just i'm just grateful and because i've been in that space of gratitude i feel like so many other things have just been coming like mm-hmm. blessings on blessings on blessings without me even asking for it you know god my ancestors the universe has just been like here you go here you go the more you say thank you the more you're blessed mm-hmm. um so the one thing i love about myself has been about really embracing that spirit of gratitude and yeah man just kind of learning to listen and understand more than seeking to be understood mm-hmm. it's something i'm i'm learning and just that self awareness i'm in a very 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 different space in my life and sometimes it scares me because i look at myself and i'm like hold up who's this person but when did you get here i know <laughs> but but i i love the person i'm growing into so yeah, yeah. and that's a wrap babe. we're that's done all right so that's how we officially wrap up we're so over time but Oopsie. it's fine I just want everybody to know Miss and Tabby held me hostage. <laughs> <laughs> she she said we're not done. Yeah. It wasn't up to me, but I think it was absolutely incredible and so so worth it. Thank you so much for sharing this project. It's it's really more powerful than than maybe you even realize. Oh, um because it lands in specific places um with specific people. Thank and you. it's like I said to you for me it's been a companion and I'm sure there are so many other people as well who have resonated with it. And thank you for coming to share and also just reminding us that we matter we do you know you yourself matter before you go out into the world to show up for anybody as you know whatever as the banker that you are as the mom that mm. you are as the girlfriend wife whatever yeah. roles that you find yourself playing in the world but it's exactly what you were saying you need to be full first exactly. before you go out there so thank you for that reminder thank you thank you <sighs> okay before we cry <laughs> Closing out with Miss and Tabby. No tears formed against Michelle Prosper. <laughs> you saw it. I saw it. Let me tell you something I there. Saw it. <laughs> you guys are silly. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Okay, so the backstory to that thing is, man, I've been crying. Why? I don't know what's happening to me. Happy tears or sad tears? A bit of both. Okay. And I'm not somebody who cries. Okay. I'm one of those people. I'm like, ah, oh, I cry twice a year. I'm good. That's my quota. <gasps> <laughs> I don't <Okay>. appreciate this. <laughs> I genuinely don't appreciate what is happening to wow. me. Wow. She just exposed you. Ge- no, but generally. So we're talking yeah. about generally. She's going <clears throat> because generally versus what's happened to me in the past three weeks. Do you want to talk about her friend? No, ma'am. Okay. I'll bring you some chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> but I was I remember I was I was I was saying to someone I was like you know it's because I've been a staring for however many yeah. years that God the universe my whole they're all conspiring and going yes clever let's see them tears now's now. the time and I remember even I think it was yesterday I was like I woke up and I was like I'm gonna cry today but I don't know why you just wanted to cry yeah it's okay release it eh? it happened just just <laughs> just release <laughs> it's fine babe if you want to cry cry just release <laughs> i think that's where we'll wrap if you want to cry cry <laughs> just release don't oh, be like me be man. better than and, me and much love to all the people who've been supporting me hey like like uh, yeah I, i can't even love is for them love is for those people who've been riding with me from day one i can't i can't thank them enough she can't thank you enough so i'm not going to play love if you want to hear love go get the album <laughs> Go get the album. <laughs> Please don't bootleg it. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> as funny fagas, as fagas. They and then they tag you <laughs> in the tweet that they are bootlegging. I'm like, but the disrespect, guys. <laughs> How do you tag me and you're bootlegging my ish? Ah, it's just a. Hey, we see you. We Stay see up. You. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for our content for the week. Like what a wow. <laughs> All right guys, remember in everything that you do, make sure that you are in your element and while being in your element, keep it pristine. I'm back again tomorrow night, 6 to 8 p.m. No Mr. Instro tomorrow night, but I promise you, we will have a good time. Bye. Say bye and Tabby. Bye.